Hello everyone, it's Dark Seeker here again. Welcome back for another video. Now, in my last video, I featured a, uh, an, a Reno Dragon Priest deck going from rank 10 to rank 6 on wild mode with some nice win streaks. And I continued playing the deck at rank 6, and that's where I hit a bit of a problem. I couldn't make it to rank 5. I'd win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose a game. It was very frustrating. I think. On that evening, I hit a bit of bad luck. But the, the problem is, I was facing a lot of control decks, and the games are going 20 minutes, sometimes 25 minutes. And when you're a casual player with maybe an hour or a maximum of two hours to play in a given evening, if you're not making progress, you know, after these 20, 25 minute games, it's very frustrating. And this game right here is a perfect example of a game that really, really frustrated me. So we're both in fatigue, and you look at my hand, I have value in my hand, right? I have Light Bomb, I have an Ngoro Pack, I have Molten Reflection for Ysera. Now, my priest opponent has just played Kalimos from an Ngoro Pack, right? And he's trusting in the fact that he's not dead, I mean, I don't have lethal, I only have one copy of Nightmare in my hand, so I have to get rid of Kalimos, right? So Light Bomb will be uh, the easiest way, I think, of doing that. And the wonderful thing about Light Bomb is that my board survives. And I even have enough mana to duplicate your Sarah. Uh, and to go face, and I even fitted in some healing. So serious value here, and I have enough damage on board and enough damage with Nightmare to have lethal next turn. Well However, look at what my priest opponent does. He well played, played Kalimos last turn from the Ungoro pack, and he got Blaze Crawler this turn, which did the five damage to my face, and you're thinking, oh, I'm not dead yet. Well, three fatigue damage is enough to kill me. Well that played. game tilted me so much and I don't usually get tilted by Hearthstone. If I lose, I lose. Fair enough. But when you've been playing for 20 minutes and you lose to Ungoro Pack RNG, uh, it just makes you really sad. So, in order to hit rank 5, I went back to an old favourite of mine. Now, this deck is Secrets Paladin. Um, specifically, it's the MMM 3K3 Secrets Paladin that I featured on my channel uh, a couple of weeks back, I think. But in that previous video, I only showcased one game with this deck. And some of the feedback that I received uh, was, was of, you know, was people saying, well, you only featured one game. Uh, we see more games to decide if this deck is worthwhile or not, or if it's a good deck. So, ask and you shall receive. In this video, I'll feature three different games showcasing this Secrets Paladin taking me from rank 6 to rank 5. So, how does the deck work? Well, you've got Secret Keeper, which you want to play early with some secrets, and sometimes a buffed up Secret Keeper can be enough to help you win the game because it trades very effectively with low attack, low health minions that your opponent plays very early on and it paves the way for you to control the board and then sequence into your other mid-range threats. Um, speaking of, well, sort of the, the mid-game, you've got, uh, you know, Haunted Creeper into Hydrologist, going into Muster for Battle, into Shredder, uh, and then, of course, the likes of True Silver Champion to kill enemy minions. And as you head to the late game, you have the likes of Dr. Boom, Ragnaros Lightlord, Tyrion, and Mysterious Challenger. Now, Challenger is significant in this deck because it's all about value. You draw out four secrets, potentially, and, uh, you know, it's, it's great value because it thins your deck out, which then paves the way for those other late game threats to be drawn. So... Let's start off looking at this deck in action against a warrior. Now, Sleepy Bear. This is a player that I've uh, that I've come across quite often 
uh, at this point in the ladder, sort of rank 7, rank 6, rank 5. And if I had to guess, I'd say Pirate Warrior, but given that he didn't play anything on turn 1, makes me wonder. However, if you look at my board, there's a Secret Keeper. And I was feeling pretty good about myself up to this point, where he plays the cannon, and of course, two pirates. And what he was hoping for, you see, he saw him targeting the Secret Keeper. He was hoping that the uh, the burst damage there coming out of the cannon would have hit the Secret Keeper. It didn't. So, very unlucky for him now. We even get Avenge, which is insane. Because now, this buffed up Secret Keeper is going to do so much work. And this is how you run away with the game, with a start like this. A start like this, which has actually managed to contest the Pirate Warrior start. And the Pirate Warriors start with patches and the cannon and the first mate and the weapon it is the best start in the game, quite frankly. Um, so we were able to outlast him, which was great. And Trussel the Champion there, just doing some great work for us. So we have the board. And yes, the Pirate Warriors got a two attack weapon. If a two attack weapon kills a Silver Hand recruit, I'm happy. That's value for me, as far as I'm concerned. That's two attack, killing a one health minion. And now, look at my hand. We've just got to survive to turn six, play the challenger, draw out four secrets, and we're pretty happy. My health total is reasonable. The question is... How does he address the three Silver Hand recruits? Wow, that's one way of doing it. But we did get some value out of it. He had to overwrite his weapon, so that's pretty good for us. Okay, so I'm going to make the assumption here that he'll go face. And if he does that, we'll get the Avenge buff on the minion. And we'll still have something left on the board. Although Frothing Berserker is a little bit scary. Hmm. Yeah, he's going face. So he knows that I would not risk putting my face into the Frothing Berserker with True Silver Champion. It's just still too much damage to take, right? So he knows that I'm going to put the Hydrologist into the Berserker. And that's absolutely fine, because we have a mysterious challenger. Who am I? None of your business. Four secrets in play there. If we had a fifth secret, we'd have our Christmas tree, which would make me quite happy. But anyway, um, what does he do here? How does he address that challenger? Okay, he wants to proc Noble Sacrifice. Okay, get down. We get the Avenge buff on the Challenger, which is brilliant, because it becomes very difficult for Pirate Warrior to deal with a large minion that's got 8 health. Um, I mean, the only easy ways of dealing with it are to throw charging minions into it, or to use Mortal Strike to try and kill it. <clears throat> But yeah, feels bad for him. He had to trade the Corcoran Elite there <laughs> into a minion. We don't have lethal here. I mean, Consecration does something. And I think we put him to one health. Yeah. There was no way of him making a comeback next turn. So that was a sweet, sweet win against a Pirate Warrior. Okay, heading into our next game, it's another warrior. And this opening hand is interesting. The one drop and the two drop are excellent. Dr. Boom is not what you want to see in your opening hand. But 
hopefully we can survive to turn seven and he didn't get his patches value he did not get his patches value wow okay that means patches is in the opening hand now i'm just happy to sacrifice my secret keeper here i i know he'll kill it he'll trade put his face in that's fine because next turn i have options right i have the coin so i can play must of a battle or i can play the crawler now the crawler is fine here we wanted him to play a pirate that had some significant value and a 3-3 pirate is pretty reasonable to kill uh, with your crawler. I mean it's better than killing a 1-1 pirate uh, like the first mate. And there he is! There's Patches! <laughs> it's worthy of a well played. But he's, he's out of cards. Look at my hand. I will be able to outvalue him as we head into the mid game here. And I think he realises that. So, yeah, another win against a pirate warrior feels really, really good. Okay, so heading into now our final game, it's against a shaman. Oh dear, someone's making a bit of noise out there. Um, up against a shaman here. Now, I kept the true silver, not expecting to get another true silver champion. So, a bit awkward here. Let's see what he plays. Because we're also not sure what kind of a shaman this is. There are different kinds of shaman. There's aggro, there's elemental, there's control. Is Jade. I think we're about to find out though. Okay, it looks like Agro Shaman um, that plays the Trogs and the four mana seven sevens that's clearly so balanced. Hmm. Okay, I'm actually not going to play the Crab there and the reason is Next turn I can just coin out True Silver and kill his 3-4. Uh, and if I play the Crab, it just dies to the 3-4. He, he gets a very nice value trade, which um, I don't want. I don't want him to have. And there's always the potential that he plays some pirates in this deck. There's always the potential that he has patches uh, or the Corsair uh, to nullify weapon value. So, we may want to hang on to the crab, just for a little bit. Um, and if we have nothing better to do on a future turn, we'll just play him. Okay, he is determined to keep the board clear, so using his weapon there uh, to clear minions that, have, uh, that are of no consequence. But he wants the board clear, so... Okay, let's see what else he can come up with here. It's a 1-1 one, one Totem versus a 4-3 Shredder. And you're usually happy with the minions that, that drop from part of Shredder. Unless it's a Doomsayer, of course. Um, although that's not always a bad thing. Doomsayer dropping from a Shredder can be good if your opponent has a board of minions and then the Doomsayer goes off and then the board gets cleared. That can be a good thing. Wow, Flame Tongue Totem. Okay, let's see what comes out. Okay, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. It's a 1-1. One, one. I guess Agro Shaman is harder to play than Pirate Warrior. I think there are more decisions to make, like do you commit a Flame Tongue Totem? Uh, especially when your opponent has a way of dealing with it. So, I, I guess by playing the Trog, he's giving me some options here. He's saying, do you want to kill the Flame Tongue or do you want to kill the Trog? Because both are dangerous in their own right. Uh, but I think we have to prioritise with killing the Flame Tongue Totem here. Because it's buffing up the Healing Totem um, and you just get too much value from it. So we put a roadblock in the way with the Wicker Flame.
How's he gonna respond now? Oh, totem golem. Oh, and a flame wreath faces. Okay, so aggro shaman doing aggro shaman things here, and that's a pretty beefy board. Hmm, how do I want to deal with this? Spike Reef Steed is an interesting pickup, but I think Consecration is fine. Uh, I think our focus is just to remove as many of the bodies from the board as we can. And to make our board as wide as possible. And those trades achieve it. Sure, we're leaving the Flame Wreathed Faceless alive. That's, that's dangerous in itself, but we have ways of dealing with it. Next turn. Wow, he's, he really values the seven to the face, which I think is the correct play if you're the shaman here, but we have true silver champion. And the question is, are we happy to take seven? I think we are. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm even gonna play redemption here. Now, why am I playing redemption? If he has Maelstrom Portal, something will come back to life on the board. And yeah, it may only be a 1-1, one, one, but something, you know, just having something there is, is better than having nothing. Um, and if he doesn't clear minions from my board, then we play Rag Light Lord, and maybe we'll, we'll have a chance of uh, him trying to kill the Light Lord with a Jade Lightning and a trade or whatever, or some spells, Lava Burst. And then we get the Light Lord back. So we'll see what happens here. So he doesn't have Maelstrom Portal. That's interesting. Okay. Now I have. Oh, Lightning Bolt. To the face. Ha. Huh. Okay. He's really desperate to do damage. Right. So I have a number of options now. I can trade all of my minions into the Drake. And then use my face on the 1-1 one, one, to preserve some health. Um, justice. Or I can use my face on the Drake and not care too much about my health. And then trade in the Crab. Yeah. I like this play. So we kill the injured Crab. It guarantees the healing on our face. And we're left with two one ones. Okay, fine. Fine. If I'd sacrificed my entire board and just left Rag on the board, uh, then if he had spells to kill Rag, we'd get the redemption. Um, that that's the only other consideration there. But this is fine, you see, we look, we get a spider back. We get a spider back, which we can now trade into his one one. So it works out, right? Huh. Well, buffing up Light Lord feels good. That is the second Flame Wreath Faceless, and when you've seen two of them, that's the majority of his big threats sort of dealt with. Um, the only other thing you're scared of is like double lava burst to the face. But when Rag Light Lord is healing you for eight every single turn, it's pretty much game over for the Shaman. Oh look, Patches. <laughs> Late in the game. South Sea Death Camp, I forgot about that card. Hmm. And the Crackle. For five. Unlucky. Yep. So that's a win. I mean, even if he'd roll for six, we're drawn to Dr. Boom, right? Or Tyrion. And there's the win streak. Taking us into rank five. So, that felt really good. Having beat two pirate warriors and an aggro shaman in this video, um, yeah, this deck has serious, serious value. Um, my only concern with it, 
and I may have raised this concern in my previous video when I featured this deck, is that it gets control classes. Sometimes you run out of things to do. You run out of minions. Um, if they use their light bombs, their if it's a priest, if they use their light bombs, they're in tombs. Um, you know, their uh, dragonfire potions to deal with your big threats like Dr. Boom, Tyrion, and the Challenger, and the Light Lord. Y you have nothing left. And then you just go into your late game and you're top decking cards like Golka Crawler or Haunted Creeper, and they just outvalue you. So, in order to win with this deck, you have to win with your mid range threats and then sort of finish off with your late game threats. Your game cannot go on forever, and the longer the game goes, the more the more of an advantage those control decks have. So you have to finish the game off in good time, um, and sometimes that involves making sort of difficult decisions about whether you trade with a minion or whether you go face for the damage because you know you have to finish the game off, and if you know you've got something else in your hand that's really big that you can play on the following turn, like a Tyrion, you know, that, that can then block the enemy board, just, you know, sometimes just going face is the way to go with this deck. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and for those of you that were sort of on the fence with this deck, weren't sure whether it was a good deck or a bad deck, hopefully this video has proven that it's it's a good deck and it can take you to rank 5. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, I'd be very grateful, and I'll see you all again very soon for more Hearthstone action.